everyone. My name is Alexia Brewster. I'm an admissions counselor here at Penn State Abington. Uh, I'm very excited to go over what we have to offer as a campus and as an institution as uh, Penn State University. So to kind of start, uh, Penn State is actually one institution, but it's spread out across 20 different campuses. Um, so students really have a lot of options when it comes to what their college experience is going to look like and what's the best for them. Uh, you can see on this map, the start, that's where Abington's located. Uh, we're pretty close to Philadelphia. A lot of, of students are really uh, drawn towards University Park as well. That's kind of what people refer to as like a main campus, uh, where there are 47,000 students there. So it's located in the middle of the state. It's about three hours away from Abington. Uh, and then there's a bunch of other different options for students interested. Um, they range between 500 to 5,000 students, and there are all the other campuses that you can see on this map. Um, so the nice thing about Penn State as well, because we're one institution, we allow our students to kind of move between different campuses. Um, so you can either choose to stay on one campus for all four years, or you can choose our very popular 2 plus 2 program. Um, so about 50% of our students actually do 2 plus 2, and it's where they start at one campus, and then they go on to a different campus. Uh, and they're guaranteed that spot. They don't, they're not a transfer student. All they have to really do is file some paperwork with their academic advisor when they officially declare their major second semester of sophomore year. Um, so again, it kind of depends on what you, who you are as a student and what your needs are as far as what route you choose to go with Penn State. Um, but looking at Abington specific, the campus that you're currently interested in today, um, so we're, we're about a little less than 4,000 students and we have a pretty small faculty to student ratio that's very intentional. Uh, we're looking to give our students more one-on-one -on -one attention with their faculty uh, by having those smaller classroom sizes. Uh, we're also the most diverse campus out of all the 20 campuses, which is something that attracts our students specifically to this campus. 40% uh, of our students are the first in their family to go to college. And that's something we're very excited about and excited to have them in the classroom with our students. Uh, we also have 31 states represented and 27 countries. Um, so really, the hope is that by being an Abington student, you're going to be in a classroom setting where people from all over the world um, are really sharing, expressing different ideas. So uh, you're getting that kind of uh, experience versus something a little bit different from a different institution. Um, so looking at what we offer, so Penn State as a whole actually has over 275 majors, which is a lot um, to choose from. So here at the Abington campus, there are 21 majors you can actually complete here. Um, so here they're all listed so you can see the differences. Um, something I like to mention that our nursing program is not actually a traditional BSN program. It's an RN to BSN. So if you're looking to do nursing here, you have to have your RN, uh, typically from like a community college, um, before you come in for your BSN program. Um, so that's something I like to mention just because it's a very popular program uh, with a lot of students. But other than that, here's our full complete list of majors that we have for our students. Uh, otherwise, we'll help prepare you for your 2 plus 2 program if we don't offer your ending major. Um, so you'll be able to transition pretty seamlessly into your final two years at wherever you may end up for your final major. So looking at how to get involved, uh, we have a ton of clubs and organizations on campus, uh, whether it's in mural sports, leadership organizations, service projects, really whatever you want to do, uh, we have that available. And if there's something that you really want to um, see on campus, you can actually create a, your own club or organization, which is really exciting for our students. Um, so regarding also our Division Three athletic teams is available for our students to choose to play. Um, so if you're interested in being a Division Three athlete, we have uh, our coaches are interested in meeting you. So I can definitely con uh, connect you with them so you can get their contact information. Um, so feel free to reach out if you're interested in that. Looking how to enhance your education. Um, so there's a lot that we have available for students in order to take them to the next level. So they're more marketable when they leave us and go into the uh, workforce. So one of them is our study abroad programs. Uh, we have a very robust study abroad um, office that helps you uh, choose between 300 different uh, programs across the globe um, to really get you the experience you need to be, um, what you're looking for really within your college experience. So that could be an embedded program where you do majority of your coursework here in the US and then for a week you go abroad with your faculty member or a Penn State students, or it could be a semester long program or a year long program if you're feeling very adventurous as well. Um, so we have all those available for our students if they're wanting to do that. Uh, another thing we have are internship opportunities. Uh, we expect majority of our students to actually uh, have an internship before they graduate just because this is what will set you apart from other students once you um, are starting to apply for jobs after you graduate. So our Career and Professional Development Office has been very intentional and strategic in developing um, local partnerships within Philadelphia and the Abington community so our students can get that hands-on experience they need in order to um, thrive and be success successful. 
Um, we also offer two different types of honors programs uh, here at Penn State. So the good, a good way to kind of understand it is one is specific to the Abington campus and the other is actually multi-campuses. Um, so Abington honors, you'll actually be automatically considered when you apply and so you should know them uh, after you receive a decision. Uh, the other is the Schreier Honors College. So that is um, something you actually have to send in a separate application for and they have their own um, admissions timeline, if you will. So if you're interested in Schreier and you're a rising senior um, for next year, you're going to want to submit your application, I believe, by uh, end of November. Uh, early December is when the deadline is for that. But they have their own admissions office, so if you need that information, we can definitely connect you as well. Um, in addition, we have research opportunities, which I think majority of the students who choose Penn State, that's one of the reasons why they're going here is because of the amount of money, the grant money we receive for research. Um, so by choosing Abington in the smaller classroom sizes, um, you're really able to develop relationships with your faculty member and get to know what they're studying, uh, what they're looking into, what they're passionate about, and see if it aligns with your own passion. Um, so it's or as early as your freshman year, you really can be on a research project with faculty member and other students if that's something you're interested in, and then presenting your findings at different uh, conferences across the state. Uh, so looking at what else we offer, uh, we know that law and medical um, careers are very popular with students nowadays, so that's why we have pre-law and pre-med advising. So basically it's going to be a faculty member um, who's experienced in the field that's going to help you through the process. They're going to help you understand the LSAT or the MCAT, what's on it, what you need to do, what types of classes you should be taking to make sure you're on track for getting into law school or medical school, uh, whether it's with us at Penn State or a different institution. So looking at uh, where you're going to live for Penn State, uh, we have one residence hall here at uh, Penn State Abington, so it's, we call it Lionsgate. Um, so it's apartment style actually, so it comes with a full kitchen, a living room, private bathrooms. Typically it's going to be either a four or six person suite and kind of anticipate sharing a bedroom with one person. Uh, it's located slightly off campus, so about a mile and a half, so it's walkable for students, but we also have free shuttle services to take you to and from campus that run continuously throughout the day um, to make sure that you're getting to your classes on time. Otherwise, we do have off-campus options as well. Um, the main difference is that there isn't an RA presence, so there's not a residence hall assistant um, or programs available at these apartments, um, but they do offer both single and double bedroom options. They come with full kitchen, all the uh, furniture you need. Um, there are self shuttle services as well. Um, these apartments are typically between two to three miles away, so it might be a little bit longer of a walk, so that's why we provide those shuttle services, um, but otherwise your vehicle is allowed. Um, so a lot of students will choose these options if having a vehicle is very important to them. Um, and then there are only Penn State students at both of these options. We have a couple other off-campus housing options that are not just Penn State students. Um, so that's something important to think about. And then the price of these apartments are pretty comparable to Lionsgate. So now that you kind of know a little bit about Penn State, uh, we're going to talk more about how do you apply to Penn State. So there are three different types of platforms that we use. You can use our internal one, the My Penn State application. The common app application or the coalition. Really, it's whatever is up to you. Uh, what your preference is is what you choose. Um, but I do like to mention that if you would like to receive a fee waiver, um, please apply through the My Penn State one and not the common app because we cannot give fee waivers through the common application since we don't own that platform. Um, so looking at what you need to complete your application, so that's that online application. After that, you'll need to send us your standardized test scores, either the SAT or ACT. Uh, the code for that is 2660. Um, so we will need to receive them. We do not super score as well when we're making a decision. And then the last part of the application is your self-reported academic record, the SRAR. Um, so don't send us your high school transcript yet. We actually uh, request them afterwards when you've already graduated from high school as proof uh, and then verification for the information you put in your SRAR. So the SRAR is basically, um, it's an internal way of, for you to plug in, okay, I took this class ninth grade, got this grade. And then you keep going throughout ninth grade, all of 10th grade, 11th, you'll put down what classes you're taking in 12th grade, as well as uh, an IP for in progress for those grades, since obviously you would not have those um, grades yet. So it's important to think about uh, for students as far as filling that out. If you have questions, um, I know it can be a little bit confusing. Some students might need a little additional support. Reach out to our office. We're happy to walk you through it or send you YouTube tutorials to kind of show you how to go about it. So for Penn State, uh, we like to say that admissions decision is an academic one. We're a very academically competitive campus. 
um, or institution or university for students. So two thirds is more based on your high school record. So we're looking at the grades you got in high school, the classes you took, do we see an upward trend, different things like that, your math level for some cases. Um, some of our programs, you have to have calculus in order to be able to uh, be admitted into that program. For example, anything STEM related, engineering, biology, sciences, or business as well, you have to take a pre-calculus, calculus, or trigonometry class. Um, by the time you graduate in order to qualify. And then one third of our decision is more based on your standardized test score. We don't focus as heavily because it's not always the greatest indicator because we understand that some students have, might have test anxiety or something like that, um, or maybe had a very poor test day. Um, so that's why we tend to focus more heavily on your high school grades and how you're doing in high school since that is usually a better indicator for us to know that you're gonna be a successful uh, college student. So estimating your eligibility. Uh, we oftentimes will get questions of, Okay, so what do I need to get in order to get to this campus versus this campus? Um, so hopefully this slide kind of gets you a good, I good idea as far as um, how competitive you are for a campus. University Park is the most popular campus, which means it's the most competitive because they receive the most applications. So you're looking at above a 3.5, above a 1200 on the SAT, and above a 28 on the ACT. Um, the Abington campus is actually slightly less competitive. We're looking more 3.0 to 3.5. Uh, 1,000 to 1,200 for the SAT, and then about a 23 to 28 on that ACT. Um, so if you're kind of wondering like, oh, am I likely to get into this campus versus this campus? This slide can kind of tell you what our 50% of our incoming class is sitting at. So looking at the uh, enrollment timeline, so August 1st is when you can start applying for Penn State. Um, November 1st is our first deadline. It's early action. This is a non-binding deadline. Um, so it's basically more of a promise that if you get everything in by November 1st, you will have maximum consideration for your first choice campus, as well as your intended program, so your major. Uh, and then we'll get you a decision by the winter holidays, actually. Uh, the second deadline is November 30th. It's your priority filing deadline. Um, so that one is kind of the second best tool for getting into your first choice campus and major. Uh, and then we let students at the end of January know whether or not they've been admitted to Penn State by then. Uh, other than that, it's rolling admissions, so you could apply in February, you could apply in March if you're interested. Uh, we typically recommend earlier, though, just to make sure you have the best chance of getting into Penn State, because it is so competitive. Looking at tuition and fees, um, so each campus actually costs a little bit different. Um, University Park, our most popular campus, is actually the most expensive, um, so you can compare the in and out-of-state rates there versus the Abington campus. Uh, room and board for Abington, I do like to mention that we don't require a meal plan, whereas University Park does for first-year students. Um, we have full uh, kitchens, as you know, because I talked about the residence hall. So um, within the apartment, so a lot of our students are cooking their meals, so they don't need as much of a traditional meal plan as you see at University Park for a different Penn State campus. So looking at how to really uh, afford college, this is important regardless of where you go. Uh, financial and scholarship opportunities. We uh, highly recommend that our students apply for the FAFSA or file their FAFSA. Um, so it's very important. If you're a PA student, uh, we actually recommend in addition you file your PIA, the P-H-E-A-A. -A. So that's additional state grant money that you can potentially receive from our state government. Uh, we have our FAFSA code up there. Um, for scholarships, we actually will automatically consider you when you apply. Um, so that's another thing to think about. It's not a separate application process. Um, so we'll just look at, um, take your FAFSA information, we'll look at your grades and make a decision on scholarships based on that. Um, and then there's, if you need more information, there's a website down there that will give you more information as well. So looking at the student aid timeline, October 1st is when the FAFSA opens up. So that's when you can start filing and we recommend that you get it finished by December 1st. Um, this is just so you can receive maximum consideration for all of our scholarship opportunities. Uh, and kind of, uh, you know, the first time people will look at that scholarship money. Uh, Mid-February is actually when our financial aid award letters go out, so that's when you're going to be able to really know uh, how much it does a Penn State education cost you based on everything at that point. Uh, if you have questions about financial aid, you can always talk to our financial aid office. Our counselors are happy to work with you and help you through that process. So kind of talking about Penn State as a whole, um, you're going to, I'm sure, look at different institutions, different colleges. Um, they're going to offer probably pretty similar things when you're thinking about the college experience. What I think really sets apart a Penn State education versus other others is actually like after Penn State. Uh, we actually have the world's largest alumni network, uh, which I think is a huge opportunity for our students when you're thinking of networking um, opportunities. So thinking about your future employer, it's likely to be a Penn State graduate. 
Um, so that's an instant connection. And if there's one thing you learn about Penn State, is that people are crazy about Penn State if they went to Penn State. Um, so that's really an awesome connection you're going to be able to have. Um, we're here to support you. Our uh, career professional development office actually follows you into your professional world. Um, so if you're even 20 years into your career and you need some help like tweaking your resume, we're here to help you with that even as well. Um, so that's just something I really want you to think about as you're choosing a college. Think of not only what is my experience going to be like while I'm in college, but what is this degree going to do for me after I leave college? Um, it's very important as well. So this is just a connect with us page. You can um, contact us either through social media, if that's your preferred platform, or we do have a phone number and an email as well. Um, so we're happy to work with you. So we have the admissions, Abington admissions up there, as well as the financial aid office. So please, please reach out. Any questions, uh, we're more than happy to answer them.